Good morning, Floss Tube. It is Monday, May. I, I couldn't remember the month. Monday, May 25th. Happy Memorial Day. Uh, my name is Pam, and this is my Floss Tube channel, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. And this is Floss Tube number two. <laughs> I've made it back for a second week. Yay! Um, it is morning here and a little cloudy, so I apologize if the lighting is bad. And this is my fancy coffee this morning. Hmm. We've been trying to avoid the, uh, like the takeout and the fast food and the coffee shops. So I've been making my own coffee at home. Normally that would be a lovely Starbucks concoction, but, um, it's just a uh, coffee from my Keurig that I make the night before and I put it in the fridge. So it's nice and cold in the morning. Um, cause I don't know how to make iced coffee any other way. And then I put in some creamer and some whipped cream and it's fantastic. Okay. Enough of my coffee. Um, what have I been doing this week? I had super productive week. Um, I am participating in uh, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches, Lindy Stitches version of um, Mania called Stitch Sania. Um, you can, she has a video on her floss tube. I will link it in the description box below. I promise you by tomorrow there will be a description box i know i promised this in my last video but i'm definitely doing a description box this week i have it figured out i know how to do it i have the time today it will happen um it may not happen immediately after uh the video gets uploaded because i plan on doing a whole lot of um cooking today but after that is done then i will do the description box um so anyway, I'm participating in Stitch Sania. So what I'm doing with that is every weekday I'm stitching on a project that I'm trying to meet a goal on. Um, and my goals are finishes. So I picked four projects for May that I wanted to get finished. Um, four projects that I was pretty close, at least three quarters of the way done. And none of them were very big. So I knew that I could get them done. And then on the weekend, I could do a new start. Um, so this week I worked on, well, let's, let's take a step back for a sec. Apart from what I'm doing for Stitch Sania, every single day after dinner, I stitch sometimes, okay. In all honesty, sometimes I don't do it every single day. Sometimes three days goes by and I'm like, shoot, I haven't stitched my temperatures yet. So then I have to go back and I have to look up the temperatures, but I never usually let three days go by and almost always it's every night. So I'm doing Carolyn Manning's, um, it's called the Granny Square Daily Temperature Stitch Along. And so the premise is that you stitch a Granny Square diamond I don't, I, I assume granny squares, I think have something to do with knitting or crocheting or Afghans or something. I don't really know what a granny square is. All I know is I stitch a little diamond. I'm not very crafty folks. I stitch a little diamond every single day, depending on what the high temperature of the day is. So this past week I stitched from this little square, well diamond to this one. So this was the seven days for this week. We had one really warm day. Um, so tonight I'm going to stitch the next, uh, row of the, the black outline, um, so that I'll be all ready for this week coming up. So that was, that happens every single day. So my goal to get done this week, starting on Monday, I started Tired Trio by Plum Street Samplers. Um, and I got it done. Yay. A finish for me. I'm going to have this upside down. Hold on. Nope. It's the right side up. So super cute. This is stitched on. I apologize, by the way. Um, I did absolutely no ironing for this, um, because I woke up late this morning and I figured if I had to iron, this was never going to get done. So be prepared for a whole lot of wrinkles. I stitch in hand. Um, and I stitch in hand in a way that I don't think I've seen anybody else stitch in hand. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. But a lot of times I, when I see people stitch in hand, they've got their fabric all rolled up in there. They use the sewing method. I'm very drapey. I, I stitch 
drapey and I do two hands on like a poke and stab. So there's always a lot of wrinkles in my projects. Um, so back to Tired Trio. This was stitched on a 36 count. I believe that it's a week's fabric. I do not know the color. It's the only 36 count I've ever done. I hated every second of it, which I feel bad for because I loved, I love those little sloths. I love their little faces. Their little faces have a lot of like one over one, which not my favorite thing either, but it was super, super cute. I think if I do it again, I'm going to do it on 32 count. I think 40 count will be too small. This turned out a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, but so I think if I stitch it again and I might, cause it was adorable and I'm really sad that I didn't enjoy stitching it. Um, but yeah, I think I'll stitch it on 32 count. So yeah, it's small. I think what I'm going to, Oh, I had all of the little flowers down here. I think needed, I had to finish stitching. I had to do all the little, the little sloth faces this week. And then I had to do all these little like doodaddy flowers, these little fiddly bits, which you're not, I don't know that you're going to be able to see. Come on, focus. They've got these little like backstitched leaves in the corners. You can't even see them really on this fabric. Anyway, sorry, that was some, that was some bad focusing. It was cute. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flat finish it <laughs> again. I don't have a crafty jean, so we're going to see how this goes. I'm going to try to flat, flat finish it and then find a box it fits on top of and put it on top of the box because it's so like nice and rectangular. I think it would be cute on like a little like memento sort of box. And I think I'm going to give it to my niece for uh, her birthday in December. Uh, the sloth is her spirit animal. So, so yeah. Yay. I got that done. Um, I, so I started that on Monday and then I was done with it by Wednesday. It did not take me very long at all. The hardest part was those little faces. The, they were not a good time. I, I banged those out, I think Wednesday night, and then I was done. Which meant I had days where I wasn't ready for my new start because my new start that I, I will, I'll show it in a second, but my new start, for this weekend um was the secret garden um stitching book club stitching book club it's by sapphire mountain handcrafts stitching book club i think that's what it's called on um, instagram and i think she has a group on facebook and they're doing the secret garden but that was not coming out till sunday the 24th so i had thursday friday saturday to get something else done. So I did. I got back out my new start from last weekend, which I didn't even want to put down because I was having such a, oh no, maybe it wasn't from last weekend. It was from two weekends ago, the first weekend in May. Um, it was so fun. I didn't want to put it down. I was sad that I had to put it down. So I got it back out. It was Clementine from Plum Street Samplers. That little cat face and now this is going to be a gift for my daughter's birthday. I hope she's not watching. And if she is watching, um, block your ears, pretend you didn't hear that, erase it from your memory. So it's going to be a birthday uh, present for her birthday because she is the cat mom to two beautiful orange kitties. They're my grand kitties. And um, her birthday is in mid-July and I was a little nervous that I wasn't going to get it done enough time to figure out how to finish it into a pillow because again, crafty, I am not. Um, so A, it was so fun to stitch on and I wanted to bring it back out and B, I had a timeline for it. So I got it back out and I stitched on it on Thursday and Friday and Thursday and Friday because I finished it on Friday and it's so cute. I can't even stand it. I did almost none of the called fors for this because I didn't have them. So I just figured out my own things. Um, my favorite being the petals on the flower is uh, Gentle Arts Pomegranate, which might be my favorite color right now. I can't, that deep coral, I love, 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 love this piece. I toyed with the little doodads in the center of these little flowery things, the floating flowers. 
I thought about putting in a bead there and then I was so, they were the last thing I was doing. And then I was like, you know what? I just want to be done. I don't want to have to figure out what to put in the middle. I'm just going to stitch the little X and, and then it'll be done. And I'm so happy. I, lo I love this. Um, I'm trying to think. <sighs> yeah, I probably used one, maybe two of the called for colors. If you want to know what colors I, I popped in here. The petals were supposed to be this like really kind of like rusty red color. And I just, A, I didn't have it. And B, I kind of didn't want it to be so folly. That's not really my daughter's colors. So I thought the coral kind of brightened it up a little bit. I love it. She is so cute, Clementine. So that was two finishes in one week. Yay, super proud. Super proud of myself. Sorry, coffee time. Mm. So good. It's peppermint mocha because I had peppermint mocha here egg pods left over from the winter time. Fantastic. And I put in like a mocha creamer. Yum. So then you're thinking, Pam, but you finished that on Friday and you couldn't start your new stitching book club start till Sunday. Whatever did you do? Well, I got out another project for Saturday. So this was a January, uh, January 1st new start, um, new year new start for me on January 1st, 2020. And um, it is a year of Hawk Runs Hollow. And it was a gift for my birthday in November from my husband, so adorable. He he really liked it. So he got it for me. And my plan was to stitch, like to stitch the January block in January and the February block in February all the way through the year. And I was doing really good. I got, oh, wait, stop for a sec. I forgot to tell you. Clementine was stitched on 32 count Confederate gray in weeks that works. Okay. Didn't want to forget that. So I was doing really good. This is on 40 count uh, Picture This Plus Legacy. I got January done and I got February done. And then I started March and I got about halfway through. And um, then the plague happened and I just couldn't pick it up. I didn't want to be reminded that it was March and nothing was happening in my life if that makes sense. I, cu I couldn't do it, um, which is when I, I started. I probably, the last day I stitched on it was March 13th. And then on March 14th, I picked up Seeking Refuge um, by the Scarlet House and I hadn't picked it up since. And then I was feeling a lot of guilt because April went by, I never started the April block. Um, May went by, I never started the May block. So I finally, I mean, the world here in Rhode Island has started to open back up. I think it's kind of opening back up a little bit everywhere. Um, so I finally felt on Saturday that I could pick it back up. So what I, what I did, I had the lion done before and I had the swirly bit that comes out of his mouth. And then I had most of March stitched. So on Saturday, I finished up March. I had to stitch the A and the C and I stitched, I don't know if you can see them, but there's like little white snowflakey doodads in there. I don't know if you can see them or not. And I can't see what I'm showing you because I'm covering my face. And then I stitched all the black words and I started a little bit down here. Um, there's a little bit of white down there. So I got that done. Um, and I think that's it for me for March. March is just going to get put away. Um... What I'm going to do, I was going to talk about this in plans, but I might as well talk about this now. So in June, and I'll, I'll talk about it again next week. In June, I'm just going to start, June falls under March. So I'm going to skip April, nope, sorry, April and the May block. And then on June 1st, I'm going to just start right under March and I'm going to stitch June like the other months didn't happen. So I'm thinking this won't, my plan was to get this done this year, to have it done by December 31st, and that's not happening. I think I'm not going to touch the blocks 
during the quarantines until next year when hopefully all of this is behind us. Um, but I forgot how much I enjoyed stitching this. Um, this is the first project I ever did on 40 count and it is the project that prompted me to go out and buy reading glasses because, um, I need them <laughs> and I didn't realize I needed them until I started 40 count and now I need them for, for everything. Um, but the stitches are so little. Can you see how little they are? And I think they're even littler. I'm not sure if I got out a ruler that this wouldn't be a little tighter than a 40 count. Um, because Seeking Refuge, which I, I have not showed you yet, um, I apologize, it will come out. I will do a whip parade of my, all of my like 10 projects. Um, and I'll show you at some point, but it's my other project that I'm doing on 40 count. And, um, it, they're definitely not as small as this. So either what I'm, the fabric I'm doing Seeking Refuge on is not a true 40 count or this is maybe a little tighter but I love I, I was so happy to get it back out like I broke through the mental block um and now I'm not so scared of it but I I do want to kind of stay I like to stitch the month that I'm in it feels like seasonal to me and so I'm just gonna June 1st we're gonna bring it bring it out and we'll start with June um, and luckily it's right under a block I've already done. So I don't have to like stitch the outline of any other blocks to get to June. I can just, it's right there. If that makes sense. Um, and so then that brings us to the, oh, I, I've got my cat door blocked off. Sorry. I don't know if you can hear that like flapping noise. <laughs> Silly cat's trying to poke her head through the cat door. And I've got it blocked off with my, uh, with all my projects. Um, we have, this is going to be a side tangent. We have cat doors. We have a cat door in our bedroom door because the cats eat in our bathroom and their litter box is in our master bathroom. So they, ha I can't sleep with the door open and the cats need to get in and out of the door. So we have a cat door in our bedroom door. This is my bedroom, by the way, <laughs> this is my bedroom wall. I'm telling you this whole story about my cats and my bedroom and my bathroom. And that means nothing because you don't know where I am. Um, I've decided to floss tube in my bedroom because I don't have a great place anywhere else in my house. Um, the only other really good wall, I think that like most of like my living room is a whole wall of windows. I, this is probably more information than you really care to know. But anyway, the, the other place I would film is a big red wall behind me. And I'm not sure how the colors are going to show up. Um, with a red wall as a background. Maybe they'll come up fantastic. If if colors show up good and true on a red wall background, let me know and I'll start filming there because it would be a whole lot easier to film at my kitchen table than to the setup I've got going on in my bedroom right now is a little bit wacky. So in order to make this happen. Okay, back to our, our normal programming. What else did I do this week? So, sorry, my nose is super itchy and I don't want to itch it. Okay, it had to happen. Um, so on Sunday, the Stitching Book Club Secret Garden Sal by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. This was her like welcome page if you're trying to find her information. She is on Instagram. Um, I think it's called Stitching Book Club on Instagram. And... She also just started a blog, I think. Um, I will try to find the blog when I do the description box and link it. Um, this is the third one she's done. She did Pride and Prejudice. She did, they just finished um, The Three Musketeers. I did not do those, although I do wish I had done Pride and Prejudice because I love that book. But I was so excited when I saw that she was doing The Secret Garden because one of my all-time favorite books from my childhood. And I have not read it since I was probably in my early teens, somewhere around 13, 14, 15. I've read it more than once, but I have not read it in adulthood at all. Um, so I was really kind of eager to pick it up again and kind of see my perspective on, like if I would have different feelings about it as an adult than I did as a child. Um, and like, I couldn't, the colors that she teased us with and that fabric was 
it's go gorgeous. So that for the first part of it got released on Sunday. So yesterday. So like, like these colors, the purples and the yellows and the pinks and the, like the orange sherbet colors. And the, I'm so, I'm so excited to stitch this. So it is being stitched on. I did, did I do, hold on. I will give you official names. I'm stitching on 16 count chocolate raspberry Ada. So it needed to be done on chocolate raspberry was the called for fabric. I picked a 16 count Ada mostly because I have a hard time keeping up with stitch along sometimes. I don't normally stitch on Ada. Um, although, and I didn't mention this, my granny square is stitched on a 16 count Ada as well. A 16 count antique white maybe. Um, so chocolate raspberry, and this is what I got done yesterday. I got the secret garden stitched. Um, the S had to come out and get restitched and so did the G because apparently I can't stitch simple letters without having to take them out and put them back for simple, simple counting mistakes. Um, I, this, I've never stitched on fabric this color. I think these colors are going to be fantastic. Like I'm so excited. So there's going to be some flowery bits that are going to happen right here. And there's a key that goes under here. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I really want to stitch on it today. Like I really just want to keep stitching on this, but I'm probably not unless I'm not probably going to pick it up until June. Um, again, unless I get my project that I need to get finished this week done early that I won't do my new start, um, for the weekend and I'll stitch on that some more because it was super fun all day yesterday. I did get other things done yesterday too. I did some cleaning and cooked dinner and that sort of thing, but mostly I cross stitched because it's the weekend and it's a holiday weekend and nothing else is going on. So stitching, it needs to happen. Okay. Plans for this week. Today being May 25th is Mary 25 stitching. So that is a hashtag that Sarah from Stitchology has come up with. Um, so on the 25th of every month, I bring out my um, holiday projects. So this is my project bag. I don't have a lot of project bags. Um, side story, my goal, that because, and I mentioned this last week, because I have capped myself at 12 whips. I'm not allowed to have self-imposed rule, not allowed to have more than 12 projects going at any time. I would like to have 12 project bags because that would make sense um, to have one for each project. I have two right now, and this is one of them. It is from, um, Christine stitch all the things and she has I want to say and I will put it in the description in the description box she's an Instagram where she sells them um I want to say it's stitch all the things d stash on Instagram but she she the, it, it is amazing like this is that like vinyl and it's got that like that flat bottom kind of gusset so it's in the oh, and the inside fabric, seriously, the inside fabric. The, this is the probably one of my most treasured possessions. I love this bag. Um, but she doesn't do them often. So it's sort of like hit or miss. You have to like set your notifications on Instagram to notify you when she posts something. And then you got to snag it really fast because <sighs> they're amazing. They're amazing. Um, anyway, what do I have inside that project bag? I have my Mary 25 stitching. So I have, um, four sisters and a mom in my life and a dad, but uh, he's a dad. So, but the, the point being my four sisters and my mom and I exchange Christmas ornaments every year. And, um, my mom and one of my sisters are one unit. So it's really like four, well, it's really like five ornaments that get exchanged instead of six but so I have to make 
I don't have to make, I could buy. I have to procure four ornaments. Last year, for the first time, I stitched them. They were super cute. They're on my Instagram, um, which will be in the description box below. So if you want to see them, you can check them out there because I don't have them anymore because they got gifted last year. So this year, I am doing these guys. I don't know. I'll open them up big in the thing, in the in the magazine. So this was the ultimate cross stitch Christmas. Uh, magazine volume 23 from 2019 and so I am doing I don't want to show the pattern oh here's a nice big picture so can we, can we see those okay so they're super cute and I think what I'm going to do so Vonna Pfeiffer I will link her floss tube in the description box did a tutorial on how to turn your stitching into a like a snow globe ornament with like shaky snow in it shaky snow is a technical term um so they look like little snow globes and they're ornaments and you hang them and i think these would be so cute as snow globe ornaments again crafty she made it look really simple and i'm hoping i can do it um, so that's my plan. If that does not work out, they'll just get finished. I might finish them in hoops or something. Um, but so where am I with this? I am. I already have one. This is getting stitched on 32 count. Lugana. It's a 32 count Lugana. I don't know what the color is. It's a blue. I I didn't know when I started stitching this that I was going to make floss tubes. And so I just, oh, I have it right here. Never mind. It's a 32 count light blue Lugana. And I think, yeah, Lugana is always um, sweat art. So so I got this one done last month, super cute. And so they're circles. So I think they're gonna make really cute snow globe ornaments. It's just a matter of whether this is gonna fit in the snow globe ornament. I don't know like what size, I'll probably have to get a few sizes to figure this out. So anyway, today I'm starting the next one. He'll be over here. And the next one is going to be we're gonna decide this right now because I really hadn't made a decision. The next one is gonna be the little sledders. This one. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start this one today. So little like sledders and are there skiers? No, nope, they're all sledders. They're all they're all people sledding down the hill. Sledding down the hill. Um. So we're gonna do that one today. This has been really fun to stitch because the colors are like, they're so bright and fun. It almost feels like I'm stitching on something for the spring, except that it's something for the winter. So that'll happen today and then it'll put away till next month. Let me just stick this all back in the project bag. And then my Stitch Sania, which will start on Tuesday is, Boys and Bugs by, it's Country Cottage Needleworks, but it's their, their line that was Country Cottage Kids. And this is, so I, this is a project I've had hanging out for a while, and I'm not sure the exact year that I started it. I'm trying to find a copyright for this. When did this come out? 2008. So I, I probably purchased this, um, sometime between 2008 and 2010. It came from Cranberry Cross Stitch in Middleborough, Massachusetts, which is no longer a shop. Uh, there, it's no longer an LNS. It closed. Um, so 
I want to say it, it was probably somewhere between 2008 and 2010 that I started it because I thought when I started it that I was going to hang it. I was going to finish it and I was going to hang it in my boy's bedroom. And so now they're 20 and 16 and I, I don't think I'm hanging the first of all they don't share a room anymore and second of all i don't think either of them would want it hanging in their room so um this is how far i am this is on a 32 count swigar i i don't know what the color is um so this is where i am they're super cute obviously i've got to get done this whole all the words down at the bottom but i like to stitch words I apologize for the glare. I just don't feel like taking it out of the bag. Um, and I've got to stitch the bottom border. And I think there's still some fiddly stuff I've got to do up in here. Where am I? Yeah, no, nobody has hats on. So like all the little like details, I think I've still got to finish some of the little bugs. Um, I've got to do the hats. I've got to finish that net. There's so all the little, and there's some bugs that go around the tree. So I've got some bugs to stitch and some boy heads and like all the little base stitching so it's kind of, it's just all the little the little things that need to get done on this but i think between tuesday wednesday thursday and friday i should absolutely get this done um and then what am i going to do with it it's probably going to go in my back of the closet hanger with all my other finishes that i've done nothing with because it's kind of irrelevant to my life right now um, I do know some people with young boys and maybe I will frame it really simple or give it to them if they want to finish it into a pillow or something and um, we'll do that. I'll send it along or it's always, you know, save it for someday when maybe I'll have grandkids and they are boys, which, you know, could never happen. So that doesn't make any sense. So I'm probably going to... Um, I'm probably going to find somebody who wants it and pass it along as a gift. So that'll be that. It's going to get done. It's going to get out of my, off my whip list. And I, then I can move on and it won't be hanging over my head anymore. And when that happens, then I can start on the weekend. The thing I've been so excited to start this. This is the project I've been most excited to start. Um, I could not start it at the beginning of the, I did, I chose it for the last weekend for several reasons. It's a Halloween piece and I have decided against self-imposed rules because if you don't give yourself rules, you're just going to start all the things, which is fine for some people, but it's not fine for me. So I've decided I can be working on one holiday season project and one like Thanksgiving project and one Halloween project. Like... I can't be, I can't have n more than one thing of a certain theme going on. Um, so this one's ha a Halloween pattern and that meant I had to finish my sleepy hollow stitch along before I could start it. And I had to finish Jack's house before I could start it, which is why those happened in the first two weeks of the month. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch video number one. I show them there. And um, so I saved this one for last, but I'm so excited to start this. Um, it is Hildy's Brew by Bendy Stitches. Bendy Stitchy, Michelle um, from Bendy Stitchy. She has an amazing floss tube. If you're not watching her, and you probably already are, but if you're not, you need to be. Um, I, I love her. So this is Hildy and she's got a little story. She's got these little bats and I believe that they are named Eek Squeak and Brian. And Brian is really, I don't know which one is which, but Brian is really a vampire and um, he's her boyfriend. And I, <laughs> I love that. So I'm super excited to start this. So um, it is going to be stitched on 14 Count Echo by Picture This Plus gorgeous um it has been a long time since i've stitched on a 14 count so this that'll be fun um it'll be nice big x's for me 14 count or 28 count linen but it's been it's been a while um gorgeous and so 
I don't think I have all the colors, but I didn't, I figured that was okay. I wasn't, I was going to start with the border and I didn't need all the colors. Um, but the border is stitched in this Threadworks, Threadworks 1039. Like, I am so excited to stitch with this. It is going to be the first thing I do on Saturday. Um, now that being said, I have never, I've never used Threadworks before. Do you, so for those of you that know the things that I don't know, do you, how do you, do you take it, do you put it on a thread drop? Do you bobbinate it? How do you handle, like, it just seems like a lot and it's all twisty and maybe I'm overthinking this. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll probably make a thread drop, um, with my craft, with my crafty skills that I don't possess, um, and, and put it on there is what I think will happen. I, I can't even, it's so fun. I can't wait to stitch this. So all the incentive needed to get boys and bugs done so that I can start this on the weekend. Okay. So we have gone over whips. I mean, not what, you know what I mean? We went over everything I did last week and our, my finishes everything I'm doing in the week coming up. Um, so I think that's it for me today. Um, I don't have any haul, although I did, I might have some, a small amount next week. Um, I am not a big, I'm not a huge shopper. I usually do like a once a month, um, shopping. Um, so if, if you love the channels where you get to see everybody buy all the things that I'm, that's never going to be me. Um, but I did, I was able last, last week I had asked, what those like cable rings that you put your floss on were called and where to get them. And, um, Aaron to Martini Stitcher, uh, commented in with a link and I was like, thank you very much. And so of course I had to immediately order them, um, because I want all of my projects kitted up with them. So it's just such a nice, it's so much nicer than the, all my threads usually just float around in the bottom of my project bag. So I'm really excited about that. So that should be here next week. And I will show you um, that before I kit everything up with them. And then, so future, future plans in June, I, I have, um, I didn't bring it here. So I'll, I'll show it next week when I talk about, when I formally talk about my June plans. Um, I plan on starting Night Walk Down by the Blue Flower um, for a solstice start. Um, I wanted to do a solstice start, the summer solstice. Um, and I felt like night walk down was perfect for that because that's when the night starts walking down, if that makes sense. Like that's when the days start getting shorter. I realize the solstice is the longest day, but after that, the days get shorter again. Um, so I thought night walk down would be perfect, but here's the thing. I don't have fabric for it yet. So this week I'm, I'm the call you I don't I tried to I don't think you can get the called for fabric which is shrinking violet um from kitten stitcher I think it's one of the fabrics her son dies and um it's not on her on her website so unless I can find that somewhere else like on eBay or something I'm thinking I'm gonna have to figure out a different fabric and I'm not very good at shopping for fabrics online so I'm gonna try to find something this week that I think will work if you have any suggestions on what fabric you think would be amazing for night walk down I'm looking for like a 40 count put it in the comments below um yeah, because that's going to happen this week if I have any hopes of getting a fabric before June 21st because things are shipping super slow. Um, so yeah, so you'll see some haul for that if that happens. Okay, so that's that. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely Memorial Day. Um, I hope you have a, a fantastic week. Um, Thank you to everyone who commented on my last video and who has subscribed and liked my videos. And thank you. Thank you. I, I have, <laughs> I have 13 subscribers now, which I didn't think I would have three. So thank you. Thank you. And I will see you next week. Bye.